Hi, Darren here, Darren Lutchner here from 365 Assist. Uh, I've got a new demo to show you in Power Apps. I've created a Power App where the user can enter a complaint in MS Forms, Microsoft Form, which is great. And what I've done is set up a Power Automate flow that I'm going to show you how this was put together that shows how the complaint data is sent to a model driven app into the Dataverse and any files that are uploaded that the user uploaded into that MS form is also uploaded to the model driven app actually it's into SharePoint uh, but integrated within the model driven app and also all the responses in the MS form are deleted so because they're now now in Power Apps in the Dataverse so they no longer need to be in the MS form so I'll show you how, how what this is and how it's done is pretty simple of how to use this app as a user so let me show you so it's a complaints demo uh, form Microsoft form uh, that can be shared out so if I'm a person who's complaining to somebody uh, this is what I do I'd put my name in there so I'll just read bear so that no one gets no, no real name is used here uh, hopefully <laughs> uh, areas complaint so I can just choose one of these choices a service uh, explain the nature of complaint uh, I did not Spell wrong. I did not like the service. Uh, the date I purchased or had purchased the service, whatever. I can choose a date and I can upload a couple of files, which is great. So I'll go to temp and upload these two files. And then I can submit it. So th that's the form. And then in the Power App, what I've done is I've created a Power App, model driven app if you like. Just you could use a Canvas app, but model driven app. And if I open there, I've got the complaint that's just come in today, just now. I open that with a complaint number, and here's the information I've got uh, with from the complaint. Those fields are locked, so uh, the person at the back end can't actually change the complaint itself. There's an investigation tab if they wanted to uh, investigate. They could use uh, you know the person in there who's investigating using a lookup if you wanted to. Uh, the date of the investigation and a status which is great and then if you have a look here what I've done is the documents tab those two documents that have come in from the form have been uploaded to the Power App and this is actually a SharePoint site behind the scenes here this is a SharePoint site but it's integrated within Power Apps and uh, this is uh, this is really good and if I go to the complaint itself I go back to it and I go to responses the actual response has actually been removed as well so if these are complaints you don't want uh, other people to see who designs a form and delete it I show you how to do that I've created a Microsoft form here uh, uh, just the complaints form complaints demo form and pretty simple one for this demonstration I've added a name here just a text field with a name <coughs> Uh, mix of things one another field here with uh, options so the um, user can can choose an option here uh, another long text uh, a date for a date of purchase so we can show how the date works and um, I've actually allowed the upload of a file and I'll show how that can be uh, put into the model driven app uploaded into the model driven app as well so now I'm going to create the uh, table the dataverse table where the complaints data will be stored. So I've already created a solution in Power Apps here called Complaints Demo. Uh, I like to keep all my artifacts in a solution. So we'll just create the new table here. So new table and I'll call it Complaints. And in this case, I'm going to go to Advanced Options because down in Advanced Options is relatively new, I think. Uh, there is this setting up of SharePoint Document Management, and I'm going to use that later to store the files that have been uploaded. So I'll just select that and click Save. Now the table's created. I'm going to create the columns in that table. Uh, and the reason I've got the Microsoft form on the side here is because I want the column names to pretty much match as close as I can to match the fields or the titles in the forms it makes it much easier to manage when we get into the automation flow to bring the data across so let's start adding those columns so the first one is your name just a text field that's pretty easy the next one's the area of complaint 
and I'm going to leave that as a text field. And the reason I'm leaving that as a text field is it's just a little easier to manage. I could make it a choice field. The challenge with making it a choice field is if somebody changes the choices on the form, the person who's managing the app has to be notified that the, that has to be choice. The choices have to be changed here too. There's no um, inter integrity connection between the choices in the form and the choices in the table. So the reason I leave it as text is because then it can accept any of these options or any changes to options. The other thing is these options aren't going to change anyway or shouldn't really change uh, once they get to the table. We're going to lock it down so they can't change. Uh, they should always originate from the form. So I'm going to leave that one as text. Uh, then I'm going to add air uh, nature of complaint, and this one's a bit of a longer, uh, as you can see, a longer answer. So make sure that you give it more than a hundred. We might give it, I don't know, a thousand as the uh, as the length of the text. And then I think the final one here, yep, it's date of purchase, just to show a different type of uh, field here. And in this case, we are going to make this. A date because we're going to want to use dates uh, if we ever want to do reporting or filtering or stuff and dates are much easier and I'll show you how that can be done um, in, in the automation and we save the table. Now I'm going to do a few other things uh, around the app just to make it work a bit better. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change that uh, name. We don't really name, in this case we don't nearly need the name as a a primary name column. I'm going to change, well, we're going to use it, but I'm going to change it to number, because I just think we need a number in this case. There's no individual name. Change it to an auto number. Um, I might put, if put a prefix in here for complaint, just comp, something like that. Hit that done, save the table. And I've also added some um, additional columns for investigation here. Investigation date, status, and name. Uh, and I'll show you why I did that. So if I go to what, the form, and I'm going to open up the form here. This is how I have designed the form. So you can see here, the form I've designed, I've got three tabs. On the first one I've got, I just call it general. Um, it's got all the information that's coming from the Microsoft form across to here. And I've actually locked these fields by making them read only, as I said, earlier you don't need to change them because they should be coming in from the complainant and they shouldn't need to be changed. I've then added another tab called investigation and here's where in the back end in the power app model driven app the investigator might want to do some information so I put a name date and status in that. Now we have another another tab called documents and that's where the SharePoint site is. I've got another video I'll link to where that shows how to set up that SharePoint site. We've partially set it, the, set it up when we created the table, but we need some more work to do uh, before we can connect it to this complaints. So I'll show you that in a separate video. So I've created a single Power Automate Cloudflow that when a complaint form is submitted, it takes the data and brings it into the model driven app into the dataverse and then at the end it actually removes all the responses from the form so I'll show you that as well so let me go through this there's quite a number of there's a few tricky steps in here that I think you need to to um, see so the easy starts off quite easy when a new response is submitted in the complaints form um, that's the name of the form that's pretty easy just take that uh, and uh, kick off the the flow you also need to get the response details. That first trigger doesn't get the details, so we actually need to get the details from the response ID that comes out of that. I'm going to come back to these uh, composers shortly as I need them uh, to show you. But basically the next piece is to add the row to the complaints table. So we're taking all the information that comes out of that and taking it into the complaints table. So when you create new uh, a new one. There's a table. You choose the table that you've created previously and then you obviously need to show the advanced options to see all the stuff. So <clears throat> this is where I mentioned before it's really um, important to name the 
fields in the columns in the table as well as the form so you can see what you're grabbing from the dynamic content right because you need to be able to see whoops you need to be able to see what the names are clearly to be able to match them up okay so that's quite important that that makes life a lot easier so I've done one for area of complaint and I've done for nature of complaint and I've done your name now for date of purchase I've actually done it a little bit different because you you won't actually get the date in the drop down uh, you don't actually get the date in here if you have a look in here that is a date um, field column in the dataverse and as you can see when I click on it I don't actually see the date column pull up from the form I only got I've got submission time which is not the one I want I actually want the date so let's go back up that's one of the reasons I created one of these composers so if I go to the compose here I've created a compose for the date of purchase and what I've done in this is I've actually made it a bit more than just grabbing the column from the form I've actually made it an if statement and the reason I made it an if statement is because if the date which isn't a mandatory an optional date in the form if it's blank and comes in as blank it's going to cause some issues it doesn't like dataverse doesn't like the blank from the form coming in so I need to change from blank which is I can't put the mouse over there but you can see the blank I changed that blank to a null rather than the form accepts a blank field whereas the dataverse accepts a null and then I just use that compose also to bring the actual field name in to bring that in so now I can use that output here as if you have a look down here I've used that output of the composer data purchase so you can see I've used that as a field to bring that date in quite nicely and that'll come in quite nicely the next action I'm taking here is <coughs> I want to check that attachments have been uploaded because here with the attachments this is where I'm going to put the attachments to the SharePoint site that I created earlier. So the first thing I need to do is check um, in the form to see if that field where I've asked for uploads is null or not. If it's if it's null, there's nothing in it, then don't worry, we don't need to uh, to upload attachments. But if there are attachments in there, we come down to here, and this is where the trickiness comes. This is where the file that comes that's been uploaded from the form has to be copied into SharePoint and linked to the Dataverse. There's a couple of steps here that are a little tricky. Uh, I'll go through it as uh, best I can. So the first one is we can't just take the upload file from forms and use it into SharePoint. We actually have to use a parse JSON um, command. Now this command, to use this command, rather than me explaining it, there's actually a really good video I'll link, link below that comes from April Dunham that shows you how to do that. So I'll link that below. Now let's get to the next step. Once we've got that parsed file, we have that file, we can start to use it. Now we have to do it in apply to each. And the reason there's an apply to each is because when you upload a file in forms, you can upload multiple files. So if someone's uploading multiple ones, uh, we want to be able to grab that, grab each of those. So there's an apply to each. So in the apply to each, the apply to each is the body of the JSON. So every time there's a a file we've got we've grabbed that then we get the then we the first step is we're going to get the the file metadata we have to get the to get the content the first thing we have to do is get the metadata and the way I've done that is we've already got some information using the JSON we've already got some information we can use to do that so the first thing I've done is grab just using the dynamic content I can grab the drive ID which is there and I put that in there and then a dot there's a little dot in the middle there and then I add the ID in there as well right so it's the drive ID with a dot with the ID and now we've got the metadata which is great so once we've got the metal metadata we can figure out which file we not want and get the content for that so we click on that and all we need to do is get the ID for the metadata above right we've got the ID and that will get us the full content that's needed okay so now we have the actual file which is really good um, and we can start to use it now the next piece is a little bit different the next piece I've I found we have to uh, when the file is put into SharePoint the file name is the way we've set it up is we've set it up so we're using the prefix of the complaint ID and then we're using the complaint record number here now 
the record number in the dataverse looks like this. So if we look at, for, as an example, comp 0101, this is the record number here. And if you have a look, it's actually got some, um, some dashes in it in the record number there. And we can't use them because that's not how it placed it in the SharePoint. If I go back to the SharePoint site, you can see there are no dashes in between those numbers. So we have to remove all those dashes uh, to be able to get to the file path. Remember, this is a folder and we need to get into this folder we need to get access to this folder and it's not putting dashes in that folder. So what we do is we go in here and I've just created a compose where I've replaced the dashes with nothing. So I've just reduced them down to nothing so they disappear, those dashes disappear. So now I can use that compose in the file path in the next bit. So the next bit we're going to create the file. So we just use the site address. Now the folder path is important. So the folder path, the first part is when we created the SharePoint site, remember we used the table name. So we need to use that table name here again, the backend system table name of the complaints. We use that uh, with all these slashes. And the next bit we're going to use is the complaints ID number, okay, that we used before. In the, from the dataverse and the little underscore and then the output is the output of that compose above that I just mentioned before so that's important and so what that does that folder path will end up looking like this okay we can find it's looking for that so the the number and the ID all there um, with the underscore so we can see that quite clearly and we can we can connect that up quite clearly back if we wanted to we can go back to here and we can see that quite nicely uh, into the dataverse which is which is really useful and then it's as easy as that the file name we're going to use the file name is the name the compose name that we used that we created before the name comes from the parse JSON here right so we just grab the name of the file and then the file content which we built up up here is just the body that got the the get file content so if I go to body go into a search here and there it is there, get file metadata and we've got the body from that so now we've really good we've been able to create all this this puts all the files into the SharePoint site if I open that up go to SharePoint then it's put the file in there uh, that I grabbed okay the next piece and the last action that I've got here is how to delete all the responses in a form. So when you go, uh, when someone puts in a form, uh, this, the responses will stay within the form. But I think if it's, this is a bit confidential type of work, you could leave it there. But if it's confidential, you may want to remove the, da the all the responses from that form because you're keeping it into the dataverse anyway. Uh, so you want an action to do that. There, Unfortunately, there is no direct action uh, in Power Automate. So we have to create, uh, send an HTTP request to SharePoint. <laughs> Forms are in, sitting in SharePoint, which is uh, interesting. So um, we have to run that to delete all the responses in the form. Uh, again, there's another video here from a guy called Damien, which I will send a link to, who shows how to do this as well, gives a bit more information. So I'll go over a little bit here. If I open it up, uh, what I've got here is the site address, which is just the forms. The method is delete. And then I've got this URI, URI and I've hard coded some stuff as per Damien's instructions. But I've got some outputs in here and the outputs, this is the forms tenant ID. So I put it up here. This is why I've got that. I've put my tenant ID in that one. Okay. And then I have, uh, which you can get from uh, Azure Active Directory. You can get the, the tenant ID from there. And then I've got a user one. So I'm going to get my user ID. Again, I've got that as a there and as an uh, compose and then the last one is the um, ID of the form and that can be found in the form itself when you go to the URL and uh, you actually run that form you'll see the up the top you'll see the the ID when you run it uh, of that form and that will get rid of all those and that's the flow